Hey everybody, welcome again. This is Mark Eskenazi with Emmy Corals, and today we want to spend a little time um, talking about carbon dosing. About what is carbon dosing? Because I get a lot of questions. First of all, let me say carbon dosing is something that I followed for many, many years, and Randy uh, Farley is probably one that's written most of the articles on this topic, and I know he does it also. Uh, many, many years ago, and I'm going to say about 10 years ago, Randy, I, and many people on some of the threads were doing vodka dosing, and we learned that from vodka dosing, we ran into a few problems, and specifically cyanobacteria started growing a little bit more profoundly. And somehow the vodka was disappearing from the cabinet too fast too. But uh, we found that vinegar was a little bit better at reduction of cyano. The difference between vodka and vinegar is only that you need to use, I believe it's seven or eight times as much vinegar. Meaning if you use one mil of vodka, you need seven mils of vinegar. So whenever you read an article, let's call it one of Randy's article, if he's talking about vodka, you know to multiply it by seven to get your vinegar number. Now, Mark, what are you talking about, vodka dosing, vinegar dosing? I've never heard of anything like that. Let me try to explain differently. In our system, in our tank, we have bacteria whose role it is to consume waste. And what do I mean by waste? Well, we feed our fish. Some of that food is undigested food. Some of the digested food that the fish have eaten all ends up as fish food. Well, that fish food along with other stuff in our tank, turns into ammonia, which turns into nitrite, which there, turns into nitrate. Uh, nitrate becomes a problem in our system along with phosphates. We call them nutrients. Initially, if we feed too much, our nutrients become too high. And it's typically what happens in newer tanks or in tanks that are overfed. In an effort to reduce our nutrients, we want to feed this bacteria colony that's in our tank. That's why when you establish a tank, you need a rock from somebody else's system you need to bring some of that good bacteria into your tank. Well, that bacteria does you no good if the bacteria can't double and triple every few hours or be it every day if it needed to. And what it takes to make it grow significantly is to make sure it does not become depleted in any of its food sources. What do I mean by that food sources? Well, bacteria, like all algaes or corals, need to feed on carbon, nitrates, and phosphates. All three, usually in a ratio Redfield ratio, where the carbon is about 100, 110, the nitrates being 15 to 20, and the phosphates only being one. So they need more carbon than they need nitrates, and more nitrates than they need phosphates. Mark, what do I care? Well, what happens in our tank is, our tank becomes carbon deficient. Better term is limited. And if the tank is limited, that means your carbon levels are very, very low and it happens because of CO2 levels in our home and other things. Uh, your, your bacteria can't grow. They can eat nitrates and they can eat phosphates, but they're missing or limited in carbon, and hence they can't double and triple and quadruple. Mark, what do I care how big the colony is? Well, if the colony's twice as big, they'll consume twice as much nitrates and twice as much phosphate. So what I'm trying to say is, if you can grow your bacteria colony, by adding a carbon source, which they've been missing in their diet, you can now reduce nitrates and phosphates. And hence, you can now feed more, you can carry more fish in your tank, or your corals can eat more. But it's all about nitrate and phosphate management. Okay, Mark, now, how do I how do, I do nitrate? How do I, how do I add this carbon source to my tank? Well, many of you are familiar with bio pellets. Bio pellets, in essence, are a form of carbon dosing. You're familiar with the term vinegar. Personally, I use vinegar dosing. Plain old standard, I found it cheap. I think it's $2.50 a gallon distilled vinegar. Uh, prior to vinegar, I mentioned I use vodka. Kirkland stuff, made in France, good stuff. I actually drink this one. But you don't need to buy the expensive vinegar. I mean vodka, any vodka will do. But like I said, if you're going to, uh, to go to vodka route, be careful that you watch out for cyano. I would still recommend you do the vinegar route. I still think vinegar is a better route than some of the others. Uh, such as bio pellets. Why? I can control my vinegar dose. I can go to my little phone and up the dose, down the dose, but I can't really control the dose in a bio pellet. As a matter of fact, I start bio pellets with a full load and then it dwindles to a small load, so I'd say it's a decreasing load on the system. Um, let's talk a little bit more about how much vinegar. Mark, I can't just go to my tank and pour this stuff in my tank, can I? Well, yes and no. The right way to do it is to dose with a dosing pump and dose as many times as you can throughout the day. Personally, I dose every hour, as little as possible, but I dose on an hourly basis. 
This spreads out the food in the tank on a consistent basis, and there's always carbon in the water for my algae or my bacteria specifically to consume. Some people say it's better to dose at night. Maybe that's true. Uh, whatever you want to do, but once a day may not be the best way to do it. Uh, presently in the system you see behind me, I dose about 75 mils, milliliters of, uh, or cc's of vinegar. All right, and again, uh, it does the job for me, but don't ever dose any of these products without properly testing. What do you mean? Well, you better be testing for your nitrates and your phosphates. And due to the red field ratio, the dosing of any of these carbon sources could at some point take you to where carbon, excuse me, to where nitrates become depleted. Zero. We don't want nitrate to go to zero. Remember what I told you. If we're limited in any one of the three, carbon, nitrate, or phosphate, then our bacteria can't double or triple. As a matter of fact, they might dwindle in size in our aquarium, and our phosphates and nitrates could rise. So what do you mean, Mark? Well, you dose vinegar for a year, and you watch your nitrates. When you reach a point where nitrates are almost zero, you reduce your vinegar to a 50% maintenance load, and you continue to monitor your test kits. What I'm describing for you is one of the pitfalls of carbon dosing is the possibility that you go too far, you limit your, nit your nitrates, and then you, in essence, hurt your bacteria colony. So back to if you hit zero, go to a 50% dose. Okay, how about start startup dose, Mark? Well, vinegar is not something that you can just pour 75 mils in the same size tank as mine day one. You have to ramp up. What do I mean? Well, we're growing a bacteria colony. Start with 20 mils. A week later, go to 30 mils. Then go to 40 mils and grow to a certain point that you feel comfortable with until you start to see your nitrates drop. Once you see your nitrates start to drop, you know that the vinegar is taking effect. And now you're going to start watching for maybe reducing it as your nitrates get lower. So again, we, we talked about some of the pitfalls, and that is going nitrates to zero. Some of the tips that I recommend, and that is to dose frequently throughout the day. So again, without testing, you don't know where you are. So please test your nitrates and your phosphates. So again, my recommendation is, if you're going to start dosing vinegar, which I do recommend for systems that have high nitrates and phosphate, begin slow. Start at a small dose, 10 to 15 mils a day for a 100 gallon system, and work your way up to 50 mils watching your nitrate and phosphate levels. Obviously, nitrates are going to move more than your phosphates. Um, and at some point, as your nitrates get down low enough, go to a 50% dose. Uh, with that, Mark at ME Coral, trying to help you keep your tank in its best shape and reminding you, if you want the best quality products, ME Coral makes the best calcium, alkaline, and magnesium, all pharmaceutical grade, no residue, new garbage. And on top of that, our, our ME aminos uh, need to add some nitrates and the ME dip. Fabulous jobs for everybody. With that, welcome back and we'll see you again soon.